Hey folks, welcome to Market Intraday Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. Today, Tuesday, March 23rd, 2010. Well, the grind is on again, folks. The markets across the board slowly inching up uh, with volume extremely, extremely light. 110 million traded so far at a quarter after 2 o'clock here on the East Coast. Uh, again, Wall Street is inching higher, up 50 points on the Dow. NASDAQ is up 7, and S&P 500 is up just under 3 po points on the day. Now, a couple things to go over. Number one, you can see today, look at the volume decreasing here. Sloping down on volume continues to be very, very light. Whenever that happens, and again, I discussed this with my premium traders and research center subscribers when the volume is going to be below 200 million you have to look for a neutral to positive day and that's exactly what we're getting again so you can see volume 110 million today at 2 15 p.m eastern time and sure enough that tells you right away that unless you have some crazy surge in volume there's no way you're even getting close to 200 million today on the spy therefore the market should be neutral to positive and the markets again are up basically 50 points as i said on the dow uh seven points on the nasdaq that's a third of a percent and the s p 500 up a quarter of a percent or a three points now again what you can see is the market's trying to sell off but there's no conviction behind it every time the market dips it falls into support which is right now this pinkish uh, line and the 20 moving average but there's just no selling a uh, volume to push it through and when you have no selling volume to push it through, there's no way it's going to get through. So you're going to just bounce off that level again and again and again, ultimately, until you get some volume behind it. You can see that all day today. Now, the volume has really been a key catalyst between keeping this mark higher. I mean, it's really the reason the market's been kept higher across the board over the last six weeks. If you want to look at your daily chart quickly, we can briefly bring up that daily chart. The volume here has just been minuscule ever since the volume made a low. I mean, look at the volume here on the sell-off. Here's your sell-off in from January, mid-January to early February. And look at the volume over here. Huge, huge volume. Then look at the volume just die out on this whole move up. And you can see there's somewhat of a channel there on the daily chart that we're continuing to watch. Now, again, going back to the 10 minute chart you can see the volume especially in the second portion of the day has just been uh, dead now looking at a couple other things guys number one on this chart, number one, you can see the market's again bouncing off support here. The support level is 116.70. You have resistance at this triple top area right here, and that is at 117. So 117 is uh, resistance on the upside. If you get through that, you're going to go to 117.48 to 50, which is the 52-week high on the SPY at this point. Again, watch that level very closely. Now, some stocks in motion that I want to discuss. Well, first, we'll go over support levels. Support remains at the 116.70 level. If you get through that, you have a chance of retesting this yellow line. Excuse me the white trend line here now why is this white trend line so uh, significant it is significant because this was a key breakout line if you go back on the charts here it made a key triangular breakout and all the way going back to the 52 week high on the spiders here so if you take on the 17th the high pivot connected to the 18th right here at the high pivot this afternoon level and continue to follow it through what you can see is eventually on the 22nd you finally broke above it here and consolidated and you never really broke down below it and confirmed it it stayed pretty much on top of that white line the whole way which generally means you have to look at a positive bias in the market and sure enough that is exactly what happened here and sure enough you popped up came back retested it popped up again and now you're floating in a small side sideways channel here as you can see from this lower level here sideways channel all the way across the board and again you're just kind of floating up and down with light volume behind it now uh, a couple key stocks in play today obviously Google and Baidu are in play Google here continues to be under pressure as they have been pretty much blocked out from China at this point also they went over to Hong Kong to reroute people to Hong Kong now China apparently has blocked them from that too so really that whole deal is over now right now for anyways China is is officially off the Google page, and you don't have anyone calling from China. And it gets a big market share there that they're going to be losing. Again, a lot of Internet users coming up over the next 10, 20 years that they'll have to figure out. But again, you'd figure that they're going to find some way to get involved in that China space because it is too much of a lucrative business model to just kind of go away from at this point. Baidu is the recipient of that positivity. Again, no Google around. That means they're free to really be kings in China, and we are seeing uh, Baidu, B-I-D-U, up about $19 on the day. Did pierce 600, but has come into focus on the 20 moving average. Keep an eye on this, folks. I have to say, this is, again, on my top list of most bloated stocks out there. Uh, again, news has been dealt with now. It's, again, hovering near the highs of the all-time highs, really. And you have to say to yourself that 
assuming this news is out of the way, this stock could start to really lose ground, and I think it could come down very, very quickly now that, again, this is done. Again, we'll see what their earnings are in the next couple months, uh, but I don't think, again, that this stock is priced to, to the levels it should be. I think it should actually be close to $100 less in value, and I would not be surprised if it comes in very, very sharply at some point in the near term, uh, again, even in the next week or two, if it starts to really come in quickly once this, again, this Google News, which has been propping it up, goes away. Now, a couple other stocks in play today, guys. Apple Computer is having a decent day, up about $2.30. That's not a huge day, but it's a solid day on Apple. And Research in Motion is also having a decent day, up $1.50. Now, some surprising angles here, guys. Goldman Sachs. Take a look at Goldman. Goldman continues to be hammered. All right, yesterday was hammered, ended lower when the markets kind of were up, and today again hammered lower when the markets are neutral to positive. Why? Well, Goldman Sachs makes a lot of their money from trading and different kind of profiting off of trading and, and the kind of the whole deal of dealing with the market and that kind of side of things. Now, the problem with that is that the regulation is now everyone's turning to regulate the financials, all right? What they're not going to let do, how they're not going to take so much risks, risks to ever put the economy back in, in a risky sense, if you would. And that seems to be why Go uh, Goldman Sachs is under so much pressure. You have them as being a main catalyst for the stocks, or at least everyone knows them as one of the big players that takes risks like that to make some big returns. And they've done very, very well in the history but you can't, again, and again, Bernanke said it over the weekend, you can't let these banking stocks take risks that could literally to topple the economy if they start to go bust. So you can't let that happen. Now that health care reform has, has passed, everyone's going to turn their eyes to financial reform and Wall Street reform, and you have to figure that Goldman Sachs is going to get put under the gun here a little bit. And I think that's kind of being factored in right now with consecutive multiple-day weaknesses, all right? JP Morgan is more known as a bank. As you can see, they're straight up. It seems like at least that, and the, the uh, stock is re uh, reversing to the upside or having a nice solid move to the upside today. And again, you can see how the difference is. Goldman getting hit today. JP Morgan, which is again known more for the banking side, it seems, is doing well today as the regulations may not hurt that stock quite as much. Uh, Amazon. Amazon is down a buck 67 under pressure. Yesterday, Amazon was essentially flat on the day. Today, again, we're seeing Amazon under weakness. That is interesting to note here because you have a lot of the key stocks, a lot of the leading stocks under pressure. Amazon, Goldman Sachs, Google, all negative on the day, but the markets are basically flat to positive. Right now, again, I'm seeing the NASDAQ up about 8.5 points. Futures are only up about 2.5 on the e, uh, S&P, but nonetheless, we know the S&P is up a couple points today as well. Uh, but Amazon weak, as I said, Goldman Sachs week, a lot of these key leaders are somewhat on the weak side, except for Research in Motion and Apple. Those two stocks seem to be on the strong side. JP Morgan as well. Uh, bank, uh, excuse me, Dow stocks. Dow continues to kind of be the leader percentage wise as we continue to see the Dow catch up. A lot of the other indexes made new 52 week ho uh, highs well before the NAS, uh, before the Dow did. But now the Dow, again, percentage wise, is up half a percent today, while the S&P and the NASDAQ are only up one third of a percent at this point. So some Dow stocks, what would they be? Well, obviously, J.P. Morgan's one of them. Uh, another stock that is key that's actually down on the day is ExxonMobil, guys. ExxonMobil, which is part of the Dow and another key leader that's under pressure today, although off the lows, is showing some weakness today, down 20 cents. Chevron's another one here, down 11 cents. So a lot of these oil stocks are having a little bit of problems as well. And again, it's kind of interesting to note here, folks. You have to wonder what's keeping this market up. Obviously, J.P. Morgan, Apple, and RIM are some of the leaders here. But when you have Exxon down, Chevron down, Google down, uh, Amazon down, Goldman Sachs down, the leaders out there are not functioning here on the leading side. You have to kind of scratch your head and wonder exactly what's keeping this market up at this point in the day and whether or not it will continue. So that's something we're going to watch this afternoon. And again, we'll discuss it in the intraday stock chat along within the research center tonight to try and figure out exactly where this angle is coming from. But keep an eye on those stocks, folks, as they are known as leaders in this realm. All right, folks, that's all for today. Talk to you later. Again, flat market to slightly positive across the board at this point. Volume is extremely light. Again, Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ all up a third of a percent to a half percent across the board. Take care, folks.